what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. The lads. Fella. My man. How we doing, brother? I got to tell you, life is good, except there's no damn snow up here in Aspen, but I, I don't know what to do with myself. You know, I, the, the one good thing is uh, the slopes are perfect for my kids. Yeah. Beckham has, had this, Beckham has had the skis on. It's official. He's 15 months old. Loves it. And then Izzy yesterday... Uh, shout out to Cody and Grace, our friends Cody and Grace. Uh, their little guy Kelly had a one-on-one -on -one lesson and let Izzy jump in on it, and Izzy just wouldn't wouldn't take her skis off. So she, I mean, it was probably five hours trying to get her off of that hill. It was it was not happening. I, she loved to, it. to me. That sounds like money that you're gonna have to spend in the near future, buddy. I, yeah, know, not skis, perfect. It's so it, bad. passes. You have that, no idea, buddy. You better uh, you better we better start building this baby even more here, buddy. She's gonna be a full time yeah. skier. Why is it we pick the most expensive sports to play and, oh. and for our kids? Hockey, expensive. Oh, Golf, yeah. expensive. And now skiing in Aspen is like, it's a tornado for your wallet. It's not <laughs> perfect. Hey, speaking about tornadoes, who's that tornado behind your right shoulder in that? Like, Ooh, and then who is oh, that? Oh. Look at That's Gerard Butler beside her. That's is that Butler, Carrie right? Levine? This is, in the Jerome, this is in the Jerome. So da shout out to David Yarrow. The, wow. he, he's a nature photographer, does all the amazing animals and stuff. He does these, that's like a fucking black wolf. Badass. I didn't even see the black cat there. Yeah, you can't see him. You see his eyes? It looks like Pico. Yeah, it's the <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> And then, buddy, I don't know. She's a Victoria's Secret model. She has to be. Um, she's smoking. We're going to do some research and, and figure it you out. Oh, it looks like. My boy Marty here sitting next to me. Our, shout out to Marty. Yeah. He's sitting next to me listening to our shenanigans. But, yeah, this is this is completely dialed in. Dialed in here at uh, one platform here in uh, in Aspen. Yeah, that's Gerard Butler. I know that because I used to see him at Shakers up in the Hollywood Hills back in my back in my playing days. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's Gerard Butler. What's up, fella? Well, that was... That was the 300 days too. He's probably just ripped. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. Um, and I, uh, that looks uh, like uh, Kara. What was her name? Kara. God, I'm drawing a blank on the last. Kara Knightley. Kara uh, De Develin. D e d e l e v i n g n e. You know I'm going to butcher that last we're name. We're going to have to clip. We're going to have to clip this and just have all of our listeners just take a wild crack I'm, at who. I'm going to I'm going to send you a picture of her up here right now. And tell me if you think this is her, and help me. With, help me. I love that this is what a great way to start our pod. Just talk about the, who's the supermodel. Yeah, we should do that every podcast. I'll be help me out with her last name because I I butchered it, bro. I just sent it to you. Send it to me. Yeah. I, okay. That's her. That's how do you say yeah. her last name? What a good eye, buddy. Delavini. <laughs> Delavini. That's her, isn't it? Kara Delavini. Everyone, yeah. check her out. She's yeah. smoking, and that is yeah, that's her. Yeah, that's that is a sick picture. Um, hey, tell him just take that off the wall. And tell Noah I said thank you. That looked good in my place at the big club. Hey, Noah would <laughs> Noah wouldn't fun. care. He wouldn't care. Yeah. yeah hey, no kidding. Do you remember back in the day uh, at Loops's one of Loops's parties when Sheldon Brookbank was like, uh, "Hey, Loops, uh, you mind if I take a picture?" And Loops like got ready to take a picture with Billy. And he just took the picture right off the right off the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you buddy, this trick in the book. Anyways, I've talked. Good to see you, brother. Missed you over the holidays. Let, let's start first and foremost. Um, Larry Flowers, Larry Bettman wins the fantasy final. Listen, bro, I, I love you, and you kind of you kind of you, you started celebrating a little early, eh? But it looked like it was over. It looked like it was over. <laughs> well, you're damn right. I celebrated early, and, and by rights, I I, I should have because it's. It's mono y mono. It's Larry Flowers, who I absolutely despised in any sport, whether it's me beating him in the 100 meter dash, which he for years said he's faster than me, no chance. You know, he tries to play me in this Ryder Cup action when I, with all the St. Louis Blues, when we're, um, you know, we're in Wisconsin. I kick his ass at 10 and 1. I beat him in, in basically 10 holes in a match play. Yeah, that's not and a fair then, fight. No, not a fair fight. I gave him a stroke a hole, too. But but now this fantasy, you know, I just I had a good streak going. Obi, I had two players left in the Sunday nighter, which was Saturday night, and Jefferson. Um, you just see, kind of laid an egg, bud. I, I needed fourteen points with two guys. That that and quarterback thirteen point nine eight points. I it was crazy. and I lose by point zero two. This is it's pretty wild. In fact, my 
my DMs have been just kind of blown up with people being like, no way, never seen it. Well, this one dude goes, buddy, I missed the playoffs by that much. And he sends me the screenshot and it was by 0. 0.02. And I'm like, How, does the league not do like a little double check? Discount, like, uh, discount, you know, double check. Discount, double we'll check. Where's Aaron Rodgers when you need him? <laughs> He's and in the wine like, cave. Yeah. You, you, when you think about it, it's like, wh who's deciding? Is it where the ball is? Is it just immediate? Like, you just, they make those decisions so fast. But and it got to that number, and you were watching Obes you know, because you're like, he might get the nugget back here. Yeah. Like, so when you when know, when they stopped him, you're like, it's over. I'm like, well, if, if the if the Vikings can get a three and out here. Like all you needed was a, a, a one yard pass to Jefferson or or a, or a running back, and you could still win. But then the Packers went down and got two first downs and iced it for you. So like it was, <laughs> you're like it's over. I'm like up dog. You're not done yet. You can still get the rock back here, and all you need is literally a little screen pass. Um, but listen, uh, McCarth McCarthy got or um, what's the guy in no, San Fran? Uh, McCaffrey. McCaffrey got hurt on you, right? Yeah, for in the second quarter. Yeah, that if he doesn't I don't get know hurt, if he's that hurt. I think I think he was more like, listen, I I got a little banged up, but there's no reason to get back out there. But and he got yeah. stuffed in the first quarter twice on the goal line. He had four or five chances to get one in, and then it was turn the lights out. But I, you know what? I was proud of the way my squad played, and I stuck it to Flowers for the whole day because he was he wouldn't talk and he wouldn't call, like he wouldn't answer my calls and shit like that. And and um, you know, at the end of the day. I think I got screwed. What? But what I'll uh, accept the loss. I'll move on. Yeah. What'd you get for second place? So, like five grand or something, or what'd you get? I don't even know. I, who, who knows? What? I, th I think Flowers is supposed to be the commissioner. I think he's supposed to send out a text. He's still busy scratching his nuts and sleeping <laughs> in here and asking. Uh, yeah, I, for sure. And I, Princey put out a thing yesterday. Of, I'm like, there's no way Princey came up with this on his own. I'm like, Flowers 100% text Princey. He was like, make this video. I'm like, Flowers. Stay off our social media, all right, bud? Stay off our yeah. fucking social media. Leave our social media guy alone, all right? <laughs> this guy's got a full-time job. He's watching games. He's taking notes. He's he's doing posts. He doesn't need these stupid videos from you. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, you had a hell of a season. Uh, you know, I was pulling for you because you're part of the Mr. Curfew family, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. But now we can focus on hockey, fella, all right? Listen, now we can focus on fucking hockey and when it, we, there's some money to be made here in the second half up, dog. So we can focus on that. But uh, congrats to Larry Bettman. Still can't believe he won ups. Uh, I wanted to touch on something here with you about these bowl games. You know, obviously there was a lot of uproar about F FSU not making the, you know, the, the playoffs because their quarterback got hurt and this and that. Listen, if you're Caleb Williams or you're a guy that's going to go top 10 picks even, you, you would know this fella. You were a six overall pick. Maybe I'm maybe I'm out of my element here as a 250th overall, but other than that, man, if you're going to opt out of a big bowl game because you're worried about your draft status, if I'm a GM, if I'm a scout in the NFL, you go down in my books, man. I get it. There's an opportunity to get hurt there, up dog. But if you're not going to be a guaranteed top 10 pick, you don't know where you're going to fall in the draft. Go out there, play your guts out. It's a chance to play in front of every scout on national television, and you could maybe make yourself a couple extra million bucks. Hockey players wouldn't do that. It's not good for college football, Uppy. And to me, man, I was like, these guys are a joke. Get out there and play and represent your school one last time and win with your brothers, up dog. You have a chance to win with your bros. Yeah, it's a great point. I I don't think anything you just said there is, you know, is something that a, a true sports fan looks at um, and, and and doesn't realize there's an issue there. So for me, I, I for me, it'll be like when you're an NHL kid and you're 18, you're coming from the WHL or OHL or college, therefore. And you have a chance to play like up against, you know, call it some of the best on a, on a great platform. You know, in the NHL or in the CHL, they do like the East versus West game. Remember, it used to be like Kelly Rudy versus... Yeah, Don um, Cherry versus Don Bobby Cherry. Orr. Yeah. Prospect game, yeah. So, totally, right? So when you go out there, guys would be fighting. Guys would be running each other. And then that's basically just, it's a stage for you to to play hard against guys that you're sized up against. Totally. You know, like, I kind of get it, right? Like... The NBA sits out players. It's a complete joke. They're trying to fix that. Um, you know, this college thing, you know, the FSU, pretty bitter that they didn't make the final. They have this, you know, undefeated season. But I think after watching those bowl games, uh, you know, the way these played out, I think the four best teams did make it. So that you can't really, you know, with the format they have now of only picking four teams, the best four teams made it. These games were unbelievable over the weekend. And and you got to be proud of that. But at the same time, you're right. 20 guys, I think, on FSU don't play. Fucking like, joke. starting quarterback, running back, cornerback, two linemen. And then you're playing all these young players. I mean, 
great for the young guys. They don't play a snap all year, and all of a sudden they're playing in an Orange Bowl, getting yeah. waxed 63-3. to three. Thrown right into the shit. And I'd be like, hey, welcome uh, to the I league. Know. You're going to go play, like, in our era. Like, oh, your first game? Oh, you're going to play game seven against the Sharks at the Shark Tank. Good luck. Go get them, bud. <laughs> Listen, go chase Jumbo, Jumbo Joe around. Yeah, yeah like, the quarterback was hurt. Like, if I'm on their team, if you're the other guys, you're like, how bad that quarterback would want to play? And listen, I'm a little bitter because I saw 21 points. I, I didn't know that that many guys were sitting out. I'm like, ah, 21 points, little chip on their shoulder. They throw these young kids out, like you said, Uppy, and these Georgia Bulldogs, they were not taking any prisoners, man. It was just full throttle, suck it, you freshman pukes. It was like these guys were just running over them up, dog. I'm like, I turned it off after the first quarter. I'm like, fuck, Loops is right. This is a blowout. Yeah, it's hard. Like, I, I wonder what those conversations are even like. Like, what are this? The guys all come in just bitter and like, hey, we're going out tonight, night before the game because we're not playing. Like, fuck these guys. Yeah. It's got to be just a weird conversation that like the coach comes in and goes, guys, like, I think you all should play. Guys are like, screw that. Screw the NCAA. Screw these. You know, it's got to be a, you don't think that quarterback's like, man, this fucking place is packed. That's what I was just going to say. Play. Every yeah, head, crazy, all the man. FU, it was yeah. in New Orleans, all the AFU, uh, FSU fans came. The atmosphere was unbelievable. The cheerleaders were looking smoking. The band was rocking. And these guys are sitting in their fucking skivvies on the tr I'm like, would you not want to get out there and just play your guts out for your for your school one last time, man? Like, yeah. I, as an ex-athlete up here, it drove me nuts. Um, and I talked to, you know, Joe Moody about it and, and Todd Pickup and some guys that are big football college guys. Shout out to the Trojans. They won the old Holiday Bowl down in Max's neck of the woods in San Diego. But you got to get out there and play, man. So... As an ex-athlete that was lucky enough to play a profession, like for a profession, you got to get out there and compete at the amateur level. I, I know it's a lot of money, but I just, I didn't like it ups. Yeah. No, no. Well said. Yeah. Well said. It needs to be addressed. Uh, we'll be right back, fella. <laughs> Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up is world. Party time. Party time. Excellent. Excellent. What a life. The up dogs <laughs> in Aspen. How's the MX oh, bill? Woo. Yeah, it's tricky, bud. Amex feels fucking racked up. In fact, it's it's like our missing curfew account. Oh, <laughs> I think dude. she's in the minus. Um, <laughs> I mean, happy new year, buddy. I, yeah. We talked a little bit about it, but, but from afar, man, I was checking in on you too. You look good. Your your lovely girlfriend looked smoking hot, like yeah. you know, buttoned up shirt and tie. Fucking, did you go to the tailor or what? Because I can't slim down. Is yeah. that a new suit? No, listen, I had to take the suits into the tailor, right? And uh, yeah. fuck, I could have. I almost could have bought new suits for how much it cost me to get all four of them brought in. And he's like, "Wow, you've lost a bunch of weight." Eh? I'm like, "Well, no shit, bud." <laughs> um, so yeah, shout out to Pickup and Moody, the Bubble Bay Club, where I'm lucky enough to live, and it's it's a little family atmosphere there with those guys. They've been so good yeah. to me and you. And I said, "Listen, Mac Miller had this nice little blue blue suit, uh, blue dress." I said, "I got something in there." I pulled out the the, the royal blue with the white and the black tie, and um. Listen, it was unbelievable time. Like I said to you, when I saw it, I was like, Uppy, we could do a missing curfew New Year's Eve bash right here with Pickup and the boys. Um, but listen, I was in bed by 2 a.m. Early night for me when it comes to, to New Year's Eve, but uh, it was a great little spectacle they put on. But how, more importantly, how was yours? Yeah, my, mine was good. So, so you know, we, we got to Aspen on the on the 30th. We waited a little bit. You know, we had the house rented out, and, and we came in, and... Um, you know, shout out to Sheldon Wolitsky, our legend from the Colorado Extreme. Uh, he gave us his condo in Snowmass. So we had this little ski in, ski out, little two-bedroom condo. It was where Beckham put on the skis for the first time. Guy loved it. Um, and then for New Year's Eve, we met him down. Uh, we met him downtown. We did a little couple's date, a little 7.30 dinner at Madame Mucci. We had a nice little Wagyu, some nice wine. Uh, and then we jumped around to a couple local parties here in Aspen. And then we met the crew, Mac L, Loops, um, Flowers, of course, Brock, Jay Liddell. We had a great bunch of guys. All the girls looked smoking hot. And we went to Snow Lodge. Our girl, Laura and Ashley, set us up at Snow Lodge. And I got to tell you, this DJ, her name's Carlita. Oh, she's this tiny little chick, and she just rips. So we had these two epic DJs. This guy, Pete Tong, and Carlita played... Um, I got home at like two thirty, buddy. I snuck out of there pretty good. I was I was a little cross-eyed myself. Yeah, I saw a picture of you. Looked like you're a little cross-eyed, actually. On a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally like the up dogs got the. But, uh, so so you talk about you talk about what um, you know the Bay Club did, right? They did it in a ballroom and it had like the stage and everything. Well, that's what Snow Lodge did. They did it in the basement of the St. Regis here, and they brought in this badass stage, all the lights. They set up tables, and it was just a completely different. You know, uh, feeling then you, you've been outside before for New Year's Eve, right? In the tent, 
this was like underground. It felt like a fucking badass like wedding party. Um, so it was unreal. And then yesterday, yesterday I, uh, you know, we took Izzy skiing and then I went and seen that movie Ferrari. Bro, yeah. it's unreal. It's a great flick. I, those cars are so sick back in the day, like those 1950s, like 350s. Those are so badass. Um, and the story, which I didn't know, is pretty wild. Like after the cold, I think it was the Cold War, like this guy Ferrari and his and his wife at the time kept this place going and it was like kept the business going, um, had its factories like bombed and everything. Like it's pretty wild story. So I recommend watching that. Great actors, great actresses. Um, pretty moving pretty moving story yeah you know what i saw i saw a flick over the over the holiday season as well i saw the the boys in the boat directed by george clooney um about the 1932 washington huskies uh crew team um and you know you, you talk about the, the the dedication that we had up and making the nhl how hard these guys had to work to crew this boat eight guys simultaneously getting it going uh so if you're looking for another good flick out there the boys in the boat's a nice one if you got some free time. Nice. Sim simultaneously. What a word there. Is that, yeah, yeah. Was that, did I say that right? I like that. Yeah. It seemed it, like it, it worked well. well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I texted our boy, Mac L, and uh, I said, what time did you shut her down? He said, 6 a.m. I said, that a boy. Way not to let yeah. me down. Way not to let me down. So I got a uh, text from him this morning at, at about 4.15 going, wow, that sure got out of hand. <laughs> yeah. Aspen's a sneaky town, man. It's just everything's right there. You can just get in one whenever you want. It's, it's kind of nice. Yeah. So so Drew Shore shout out Shorezy's in town. He's Saw doing that. a little uh, th he's doing a little three day uh, hockey school for Sheldon with the Colorado Extreme. And so we we did dinner last night um, at uh, Casa, Casa Tua. We had the red wine nice. flowing and and Shorezy. I'm like, does this feel like a game night to you? You got to get up at nine a.m. like with like a hundred kids, get out there on the ice, teach these kids how to toe drag. I'm like, but teach them how to score, would you? Like you. It, it, yeah. In the alumni event, you didn't shoot the puck. All you did was dangle around everyone. I'm like, teach these kids how to shoot it. Buddy. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love Sheldon, but you're bringing Shorzy in for a skills guy. I, I think, I think there's, I think there's better <laughs> guys you can get. Ain't no offense, Shorzy fell. Ah. But uh, no, hey, up dog. I'm glad you had a great New Year's, Sheldon, the boys, Loops, Mackel, that Flowers. Hey, he's just staying for free again, huh? This guy, no yeah. shame. He's Dancing bear, sort of ripper. Oh, yeah. he's something. So. Uh, Uppy, my man, I'm bringing this segment back. Uh, shout out to our boy Dennis Sandin at Citrus Motors. Gave me his tickets last night to the Ducks game. Ducks leaves. I was sitting first row in the corner. I'm bringing it back. This guy fucks. Austin Matthews. Last night he had 13 shots on net against the Ducks. Uh, Dolstall played unbelievable for the Ducks. The, the, the Leafs had 50-some yeah. shots. Yeah. Dude, Matthews, man, up close, Uppy, this kid is so nasty at his skates. I know you called out Tage Thompson earlier about these CCMs. Well, AM34, he's got one pair of one, man. Like, he came by where I was sitting in the corner, and it's just the CCM. It says AM34 with a nice little leaf on it. And on the back, it says AM34 with a little leaf there. Like, you could tell they're one of one. And I'll be, I'm telling you, the way this guy with the puck, when you're that close seeing him go, I mean, this guy fucks, fella. And one other thing I want to say about him, uh, last week he was at 59 takeaways, the most for anybody in the NHL. Reminds me of Datsuk when we played the stick lifts. Um, so Austin Matthews, you fuck fella up close and personal up. This guy is style is next level. Yeah. It looks like he's going to be part of the fellow tour. When we go up to Toronto for the all-star game, it, it should be announced tonight, which we're recording, uh, you know, Thursday. Um, buddy. Yeah. Up close and personal Austin Matthews, his size, OB, the swag, and the swag, it starts with your wheels. Oh, I don't care what you are. Yeah. Some guys like think it's the stick or the helmet, the bucky, the gloves. It's it's the wheels, 100%. Like Patty Kane back in the day, I think, was the first guy that kind of had like the, you know, the one-off pair of Bowers, like where like he'd have his name on it or like a little call a U.S. flag or whatever. But yeah, man, he's uh, he's playing unbelievable. The, the shots I was watching him take last night, like he was in some, I, I, how he gets himself in between the dots, oh. the puck, like, on a on a string is it's impressive and 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 shout out man the ducks played incredible i watched the highlights this morning at dolstall like he still has head man yeah so i think he's had the most that was like one of the most saves in ducks history last night besides gibson i think with 53 saves yeah um and then you know without Tavares getting one late like that that ducks team plays a play, plays a full 60 minute game against the toronto man. hey ops it was they kept taking penalties eh drysdale though they, <laughs> they, they called a chintzy one on jamie drysdale who actually looked great out there good to see him back good kid the refereeing is just it's just joke right i won't i wanted to bag on the glass it was a guy that was in the league when we were there too i wanted to be like 
hey, fuckhead, like, put the whistle away here. The boys are hanging on by a thread, right? I had Ducks puck line, too, so end of the game, they take another one. Poor Jamie Drysdale, a little chintzy cross check. So soft. Wasn't even a penalty. And I'll be, you should have seen the Leafs working this around. So the net's right here up, and I'm sitting right here in shanty seats. And it is just up and back, and Nylander and Matthews, and, and I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, look out. And they back to was like, they were just ripping it, and finally uh, Tavares banged one in. But listen, man, Austin Matthews, big, strong. Uh, the way he throws sauce passes is just next level. Yeah. But one thing I wanted to say, tell you, you sitting in the corner, the way these guys forecheck now, there's no upshells out there. You know, I wasn't even worried about my old fashioned being knocked off the fucking ledge of the glass. Like, <laughs> They go in like this, Uppy, and they and they hug each other. Like, get in on the floor. Like, get in That's there. That's the best man. part of the game. Yeah, yeah. The sound there. that makes, the sound it makes for the crowd. When you, if you just clip a guy, but you hit oh. most of the boards, I, I uh, actually used to get me a half chub. Totally. I turned to McKenna and I said, Mac Miller. Like, it, it, when Uppy played, like he he forecheck, he tried to put the guy in the third row. And I mean, as a defenseman, if a guy's going like a couple times, Gregor and these guys would go in first. And I'm not thinking as an XD man, like, oh, that was my dream. When they went in there first, right up, so I'm going to come in and bury you. They just kind of, I know, it's funny, Obes, but I think it's, I think it starts with, like, the coaches, man. Like, I think these coaches now are, like, going in and, like, angle, stick on puck. Like, totally. don't, don't give yourself away. Don't, like, get hit and lose, like, position and get beat back the ice. Like, we used to just go in and be like, okay, we're going to, we're going to set the tone. We're going to give you one good lick. My elbow's going to be in your chin. Yeah. It might take two, but it's well worth it early in the game. And you, you kind of, you, you, it sets the pace for your whole squad. Right? Totally. But now, like, you know, you just, what, you watch these players play, it's all stick on puck, it's swinging. Before, you used to get fucking sat on the bench. You're 100%. You'd look at, you'd be like, you swing one more time, you're not playing. Totally. Remember, we used to say that. You're like, stop what? swinging. Stop swinging. Yeah, I know. Now it's a full swing fest. You're, you're 100% true. And the bottom line is, coaches root everything. That's the bottom line. Hey, coach, just root everything. So, Matthews, you fuck, buddy. Keep her going. Um, get this fella a Labatt Blue Light. Presented by our friends at Labatt Blue. The Prestine Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsible. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Up, dog, my Stella. man. We're giving a blue light to our boy, Freddie. Comes on missing curfew. Great St. Louis boy. Unbelievable kid. And what does he do for us, up dog? Three goals. Three goals in one week. Freddie, thank you, fella. Well done, Freddie. And by the way, the one goal against the Wings, I love this. This is so old school. He goes in hard, makes a play, scores, takes out the goalie. He's behind the net. He looks at all the wings and just goes, who wants it? Oh, dude. Like, I just was ready to just throw down. It was the most epic goal. And I'm like, I, I think I was watching it at a bar. And I'm like, does anyone see this? This guy's fucking unbelievable. Dude, I just, was, I was just writing that down, man. That clip was unbelievable, huh? Like, who wants yeah, this? Who was, wants it? It was so good. I watched, like, the highlight live. It was like an NHL network. And it came on. And, and just, just, it's old school hockey. I don't care what anyone says. Go to the net. Take out the goalie. Fight someone. Fucking get everyone standing up in the crowd. Um, I love the way this kid plays, and and he he should be highlighted because most young players who come in, you know, whether you're a first round pick or whatever, you know, stand out. Do something that's going to stand out for you and your teammates. He's found a niche, man. He's, he fights. He fights tough guys. He's not a very big dude, and he finds a way to put the puck in the net. The Boston Bruins have been incredible the last couple of years. He's a big reason why their depth is so good, and uh, I just love it, man. Face first hockey. Face first hockey, and there was another clip that Princey found up of last year when Freddie went out on the four check, hit a guy, hit another guy. Then Bergeron's line comes out, and and the, the Marshawn to Bergeron they score, and Marshy comes back to the bench. He's like, "That a boy, Freddie," and then Bergeron steps up. He's like, "That was all you, Freddie." And he yelled back down, "Well, I don't know about that, but thanks, guys." <laughs> well, that like that's what makes when I heard Bergeron. That's how it used to be. Like, guy gets a big hit, we score a goal. I was all you up, dog. Without that big hit, we don't get that goal. So that was an unbelievable clip as well. That Bergeron appreciating what Freddie's doing, getting out there, like you said, face-first hockey ups. Oh, I love it. Love it. We're handing out another blue light here to this fella, Morgan Riley, who uh, spotted me in the first row there last night. Riles, how you doing, fella? Uh, plays against the top line. And listen, let me, let me go back a bit. Up Last year, about halfway through the year, some fans in Toronto were like, oh, we Morgan Riley's not our best team. <laughs> okay. What he did in the playoffs and what he's doing now, plays against the top lines every night, Uppy. And for a guy who took too many minors, 
he does not have one minor penalty this year against anybody. Like, to be a defenseman, playing against the top lines, playing 25 a night, not to take a penalty means you got good feet, good stick, and good positioning. Now, I would like to see him maybe cross-check somebody in the neck every now and then ups, but get this guy a blue light. No minor penalties, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. You brought this up earlier, and I'm like... To, to me, I, I, I don't know. I, I think you got to play harder. I think you got to <laughs> fucking spear someone or you have to be, um, you got to go out of your way to chirp the ref, take a 10. I, I don't know. You got to do something. You can't, you can't have an egg on the, on the score sheet with no penalty minutes through, what is it, 35, 40 games? Yeah. I mean, what? You're not wrong. Like, uh, those, You're not wrong. Those games where you show up to the bar in United Center, right, on a, uh, on a windy, cold January day, and it's dark at 4.30, and you just, you know, you're a little sluggish. Are you not going out there in the first period with heavy boots and just tripping someone or something? Every yeah. time. Every time I played. Morgan Riley. What's Tom Riley saying about his little nephew there with no penalty minutes? I don't yeah. know. Tom, Tom, would Tom like Riley to wouldn't have been a guy that didn't take any penalty minutes. No, Tom would like to see him cross-check no somebody. Chance. Tom would like to see yeah. him cross-check somebody. And I see what you're saying, and and you're not wrong. It's just, like I said, I took so many penalties. And so when I saw that, I'm like, that is unbelievable to play against the top lines and not have a minor. But I remember when Ryan O'Reilly would have zero penalty minutes. I love the fact that he'd be like, fucking slash somebody. Cross-check somebody. Like, you got to get a two in there. Like, you got to have a donut in there, in fact, daddy. It kind of brings me back to watching, uh, you know, we had Timu Solani on a couple of weeks ago, and Timu was, I think he had a little goose egg for the penalty minutes, and then he just two-handed that guy right in the ass. That clip Princey posted where Slatty chases him down and just, you know, from the from the top ropes, two hands the guy in the back of the back of the pants. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you got to Like, uh, man, I used to take penalties just without just, even thinking. Just because you know, going into the game, just be like, okay, whatever you do, don't take a penalty. It's the only reason you won't play. You know, your twelve minutes tonight. Sure as shit. <laughs> it's like Getz used to just Getz used to tell me playing against him, Uppy, slow down out here, man. You're a way better player when you slow down. Yeah, no, hey, Uppy, uh, slow. I got one speed. Uppy, slow down. Nobody's safe out here with you flying around like that, by the way. Get these fellows a blue light. Uh, Freddie, keep it going. Morgan Riley, maybe cross check someone. The Updog wants to see you take a minor here. Fella, it's milk carton time. First milk carton. What do we got? Oh, I'm coming in hot here. And I think yeah. maybe I put this on the milk carton. Every year it happens. It's the Winter Classic. Shout out to the city of Seattle. Shout out to T-Mobile Park. Uh, sold out barn. It looked unbelievable on TV as a spectacle. It looked great. I'm not saying it didn't look great. I'm talking about the product on the ice. The ice was slow. The ice was sticky. The game was awful. I watched the two periods before the Rose Bowl, and, and, and it was awful. I don't care what anyone says out there for these cookie cutters that don't want to say something bad. It was awful, awful hockey. Um, to me, up dog, I think the Winter Classic has has run its course. I like the stadium series that they bring in February. There's always football games on New Year's Day. Listen, I think we stay away from New Year's Day moving forward, man. I just don't think, I don't know, give the boys a day off. Let them rest their legs. I just thought the play again in the Winter Classic because of the ice and how sticky and slow it was. Up dog, I thought it was just, I, I thought it was junk, fella. Yeah, it's it's tough, Obi. I think I think what you're what you're saying is like you want the you know you want the pace of play to be high because it's a one of one game, right? And like they 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 talk it up. There's the road to the Winter Classic. There's like you know you get the reality TV stuff. Uh, you get a, kind of a good look behind the scenes, almost like hard knocks, right? The road to the Winter Classic. But you know, for for, for the NHL, it's it's kind of their one day where they want to say like, look, at hockey is great. And hockey's for everybody. And hockey can be played outside. It can be played inside. They want to showcase some of the players. But you're right. The game just isn't. It's not as hyped up as the college football game is. Right? Oh. It's not. Uh, the sounds of it. Like for the players playing, you can't hear anything. You can't hear the crowd. You can't even see like the crowd. You're just out there kind of skating around in your own little world. Um, but I, I can stay looking back on my career, man. It was <laughs> Yeah. Your own little world. Hey, where the fuck am I here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't really feel like the gladiator that you do get when you're, you know, if you're at MSG or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I look back at my, my career and it was one of the highlights of, of, you know, of my career playing in that. But it was like freezing rain. The ice felt like you're playing on a curling rink. No one could handle the puck. Um, you know, we scored a couple goals late to win, I think, like a 3-2 game. So it was kind of a snooze fest. But, you know, it, it's just, it's a way for hockey to try to, celebrate its game and then the growth of it but like you're saying it's never it's never picked up uh, um 
you know, new audiences, you know, we're competing with NCAA football. Um, it's not perfect, but then again, like we, you know, we got to think outside the box as hockey, yeah. uh, as a league and as a business. And, and, um, you're right. It's probably time that we move on to something bigger and better. Yeah. And, and you're right. Listen, the road to the winter classic, all that stuff that HBO does, that's great. And, and there, there still should be a made, a, a made for TV event. I don't think it should be new year's day because I want the boys to go out and have a good new year's and be able to be hung cheese on the couch. That's one thing I want. And why go up against the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl or whatever? And there's another thing, last but not least here on my Winter Classic milk carton. Hey, I loved it. The boys out there wearing toques and warm-up. I, I absolutely loved it. And then I'm thinking, well, why can they wear toques and warm-up, but they can't go no bucket the rest of the 81 games in the NHL? Is that because the NHL wants to sell those toques that those guys are wearing? Well, if it's, it's, if it's not a safety concern in the Winter Classic, Uppy, why can't these guys wear no bucket the entire 82-game season? Because the NHL wants to sell those toques. So to me... If they can go no bucket in the Winter Classic, why can't they go no bucket at MSG, at Crypto, at TD Garden, at Scotiabank, at the Bell Center? It's a Bush League rule. And for the NHL to do that, allow that because, well, we're going to sell these toques. I'm putting them on the milk carton ups. Yeah, I mean, I think eventually the guys are going to just start, you know, accepting the fine and going no buckies. Like, there's too much good flow to be wasted. Well, your flow is looking good, but imagine you had to put a helmet on right now. Look at that goddamn I will No, I, I would demand uh, change. I, I wouldn't play. I, I'd say, guys, sit out. You know, it'd be like FSU right now. Be like, yeah. no chance. None of us are going out. You're going to play with the minor league squad, the San Antonio Rampage. Um, I, uh, what, was, what were we talking about? We were going to get into... Uh, we were talking oh, about... Oh, you just mentioned... I mentioned yeah, no, no buckets. No buckies. I, I was... Oh, I mentioned... I wore a scarf. That's what I wanted to talk about. I wore a scarf in my uh, Winter Classic warm-ups. It was freezing. Scarf like I had? Yeah, I wore the toque and the scarf, and I had the... You know, I did the uh, the chalk underneath the eye. Yeah, listen, it's all... like It's a great spectacle, and to the city of Seattle, listen, the T-Mobile the Park looked amazing. The fans were great. The fans, it has, this has nothing to do with the fans. This has to do with the product on the ice as an ex-player that if we're trying to get the, the the average person who doesn't watch hockey on New Year's Day to tune in and say, wow, hockey's great. Wow. It's not doing it, man. It was a Bush League game. That's all I'm saying. So um, you're on the milk carton. Updog, you got a milk carton real quick here? Yeah, I do. Uh, our boy, I know he's a fan of the pod. Nick the Cousins. Boy. All right, Nick Cousins, okay? You get... You get caught up, you hit a guy, uh, he's on his knees, his back's turned you. You kind of, you, you might have laid up, but you hit him and you stood there with your back to the play, waiting for someone to come in and hit you. And when Zucker came in and laid into you, which was a hockey play, if that was you, O'Brien, you would have just grabbed him and started just pumping him. Big time. But, you know, you take the hit, but you laid there and you, you acted like that hit was worse than what you did. I, I just think... But, I seen through the the, the, the bullshit. I see through that lens. The bullshit. <laughs> I see through that foggy, stinky like lens of shit. <laughs> and and there's no way that Zucker getting three game suspension and Cousins not getting anything for that. It's like a hockey man. It, hockey is a retaliation sport. And when you do something to my teammate, I'm going to do it right back to you. And it was a very, very similar thing. So I, I'm kind of pissed at the safety. You know, the Georgie and the boys there up in the in the panel booth. Making the calls. This one was, this should have been just a wash. It had just a little, like, okay, one guy hit a guy, another guy got hit. Perfect. It had a little scent on it, didn't it? It had a little scent to it. A little stinky scent. I'll tell you what, uh, Nick Cousins, good bobble boy. Um, love Nick, I love Nick Cousins. I love the way he plays. If I played against him, I would definitely, me and him would have been nose to nose a few times. But I will say this to him, and you mentioned Georgie. This is twice now that this has happened, right? He runs goody. Yeah. Now he now he runs this other guy. He gets like if I'm Georgie, I got Nick Cousins' name written down, being like fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. But he's kind of fooled him twice now. I don't know. It's just something you don't want a reputation around the league as. I, I don't know. Like I, I I totally get what you're saying. I think Nick's cousin plays hard, and he's a guy I would want on my team. But I, I hear what you're saying, fella. I, I really do. Yeah. Yeah, like, listen, I, I don't mind you going and hitting the guy when he's on his knees. Like, whatever, it's hockey. Yeah. But then, like, when you get hit, don't lay on the ice like, a, you know, you need a shovel to get you off. Like, come on. Yeah. It was it was, it was was an Oscar-winning performance by him or when he went down yeah, there. Like, he sure got was. shot from a fucking cannon, right? He's just like, he kind of went like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, hey, listen, Nick Cousins, we love you, but the up dog's throwing you on the milk carton. So, I'm throwing uh, you on the milk carton. 100%. Uh, listen, top titty. Last week, I was 44th out of 49th. Uh, I suck. Brento, that a baby, the captain of top titty, 26th. 
Princey, 10th. Uh, shout out to our winner, Sean McLaughlin, Chicago, Illinois. Used to be one of my favorite cities. The Tavern on Rush up dog. Me and you used to do a little Niagara Triangle. We used to do Viagra a little peacocking at the Tavern on Rush. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. He sent us his info. A hat and a buttery t-shirt coming your way, Sean. Congrats on the win, fella. And then Updog, last but not least, the Saturday Night Lock of the Week presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with code CURFEWKINGS because life's more fun when you're in on the action, fella. DraftKings, the crowd is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Up dog. Lock of the night. We took the holidays off, fella. Um, I'm six and two. You are four and two. Combined, we are ten and four. We're making money for the fellas. Uh, I got them up here, so I'm gonna go first, my man. I'm gonna go first here. Saturday night lock of the night. Ooh, baby, I see it right there, up dog. I got the Carolina Hurricanes. At home against your former St. Louis Blues. I'm thinking that's going to be about minus 180. So you're going to have to give your balls a tug a little bit. But Hurricanes at home against the Blues. Yeah, the Hurricanes have been playing better, buddy. I don't, I don't mind that. They're playing up to that uh, that caliber that you wanted them to play at. Fuck yeah. To start the season off. Listen, this is a no-brainer. I know where you're going. The line's going to, the line's going to be minus 450. <laughs> the Edmonton Oilers... Hosting the Ottawa Senators, who are just stinking. You can smell the stench from here. Um, yeah, the Oilers are on a mission. They are, you know, the hottest team in the league. I think they're 13-3 and three in their last 16 games. They're they're playing unbelievable. Five points from Connor McDavid last game. I mean, heads up. And uh, that's at home. They've been on the road a little bit. So expect them to, uh, to just light a fire under the Ottawa Senators. Expect the unexpected, eh, fella? Expect oh, lock it. of the week. Expect lock the of the week. Listen, fellas out there, if you want to make some money down here the second half, I got four teams for you to bet. Avalanche, Oilers, Hurricanes, Panthers. You bet them the rest of the way. Mark my words, you will be on the right side of it, my man. Uh, those four teams moving forward, I think, are going to have big second halves. Hurricanes are coming like the Updog said. Updog, love it, fella. I love Kara behind you, the Jerome, best old-fashioned in Aspen. Uh, we got Graham Dillette coming on. The PGA Tour starts Thursday from Maui. We got Graham Dillette coming at you. Fala. Fellas. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Uh, up dog, friend of the podcast. Uh, good Western Canadian lad from Wayburn, Saskatchewan. Just the guy you want to tee it up with. Yeah, Saskatchewan's got the best little name towns in, in the league, by the sure way. Does, hey, man. the Brookbanks are from Lanigan, Saskatchewan. But uh, former PGA Tour, all-time beauty, big Flames fan, and a friend of missing curfew, Graham Dillette. Graham Bull, thanks for joining the fellas. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, you forgot Climax, Saskatchewan. <laughs> with the good one. Prince Albert. Moose, Moose Jaw. Jaw. Climax, Saskatchewan. Climax, where is that? I'm making Hopefully a t-shirt. In between, uh, you know, Red Deer and Sylvan Lake, you're right there at the taint there. <laughs> hey, how, how much do you get back to Saskatchewan? I'm uh, post COVID all that. Do you get back much in the summer times, or I know you're not a guy. anymore. It was always we would go once in the summer, once in winter. Usually now, I got eight year old twin boy and a girl, and they're so busy now, so it's it's a lot more difficult. So like once a year now is kind of what we shoot for, but uh, it's always nice to go back. I prefer the summer, but. Um, the winters are nice here in Idaho because we go up to the mountain and ski, and it's not minus forty blowing sideways. So, what's it like for you? Just uh, touching on that to go back home, like you know, people, you know, they always like, hey, he's back, like our bar, like our boy, you know, like the guy that went on tour, he's he's back in town, and everyone trying to like tee it up with you. Or what's it like to go back home? It's a li- yeah, it's a little different in the summer. I mean, I obviously also I'm about five years post career, so they forget about you pretty fast. If you guys know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I usually play at Riverside in Saskatoon. They gave me an honorary membership, uh, you know, five, ten years ago, and all my buddies are there. I try to get around it with my mom and dad every time I'm back, and uh, usually it's in and out, pretty quick trips. But uh, it's always nice to go back home for sure. Well, first of all, I know we're, we're going to talk about your Flames, and, and they're in a playoff race here. But you're ready for the playoffs with that duster and that beard combo, fellow. That's as good as it gets right there. How long have you been growing that baby? I've had the mustache. I've been wearing it now for about a year, but then I uh, started the beard kind of in October for ski season. We we spend the entire winter with the kids up in the mountains here in uh, in Idaho, so it's always a little nicer to 
keep keeps you a little bit warmer in the winter when you're skiing. Yeah, how do you get the curl? Like, is that something? Uh, is that every morning you throw? Is it wax? Or I thought it might have been like, is there a blow dryer involved in this at all? Or what? no, I don't know. And actually, I've tried that a couple of times. It didn't really work. But um, yeah, it just it takes some training. You got to go through the ugly phase. It's like almost like when you're growing up with your hair. Oh, I can't do that anymore. But you got to <laughs> just keep going and going and going. Eventually, it starts going the way you want it to. And what's it's like fun? Actually, my wife loves it. I bet. I bet. <laughs> that, yeah. that tickler, I bet. She does. <laughs> hey, I, well, what's like the worst thing that like gets caught in the beard? Like what, when you're eating something, like what is it? Is it like, you, you know, it's like anything yeah. where you, the juicy stuff, ketchup and mayo, that'll always get you. So you got to be kind of careful with what you order now. But uh, if it's fun, man, I, I like it. And like I said, my wife likes it. Well, that's uh, all that matters. I, I remember Greg's. I mean, that's a nice looking. Yeah. I'm not going to compare Grandma's beard. The symmetry. To- Greg Zanin grew this beard. By the end of the fucking year, call we were so far to the playoffs. I'm like, see, you got to trim that thing. It stinks, man. Yeah, like, it would it stink, and the shit that would be called. I'm like, you got to take better. Now, see, like, that's a nice look at that. That's yeah. a nice beard. That you probably just condition with a little head and shoulders, and you're just Home ready to rock. Home and out a little bit too. That's oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I love that up. Oil. I love that up. You brought up the blow dryer. Anything to get the blow dryer helmet. Yeah. I was like, look at that. That's just again. Yeah, this the is that, right, right from Big Canyon. I went for a little workout before this, <laughs> you know, before the studio. And I, I get in there, and I actually told our guy Bobby Orr. He's, you know, he takes good care of us. He's, he's the man. But by the way, our club guy is Bobby Orr, right? He's a beauty. That's, That's awesome. his name. And uh, black guy. You know, I, I go to to the blow dryer Obi likes to use. And I just think the juice is a little out of it, right? So I'm like, I think we need new blow dryers, Bobby. He's like, I, yeah, yeah, we got them. Yeah, no way. Yeah, yeah. So, so today I go and this thing's just humming. I'm like, thanks, bring some heat. For my little thin hair, it's almost too hot. I'm like, oh, it's good. Humming. So thanks, Bobby. It's checking out for the boys. Christmas. Your hair does still look pretty good, Scotty, man. Thank yeah. you, buddy. No, it's, I'm 40. Just turned. You're... Night. Yeah. Happy birthday. And how old are you? 41. 41. God, we maybe we could have. If I if I stuck with the golf back in the day, maybe I would have caught you at some of these junior events. Jeez, Alberta versus Scotland. Yeah, I caught you, but I stuck with hockey. But... Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. After you played at the Gauzer member guest with Whitney, I uh, I, I know to just stay stay in my lane because you two were a dynamic duo. Yeah, play too. I mean, I've played a lot of golf with Ray. Actually, uh, for years he had never beat me not at one time and he was always like he's like i'm gonna get you to let i'm gonna get you one of these times and then i went back to whisper rock it was like after i had taken like a year off back surgery I'm like i'm gonna go back down to the desert play around a golf call up Wiz when we go out. i shot like in 78 or something that day he i think you shot like two or three under and dusted me it wasn't even like it didn't even come down the last couple holes where i could have put some pressure on him and watch him squeeze it a bit and so that was a little unfortunate so he did get me that one time but yeah, we've had some good matches, him and I. It's been fun. Listen, Ray Whitney, the way our fans know Ray Whitney playing hockey, smart, was always smaller, but like was work, work, worked harder than everyone, but worked smarter, right? And that's how he plays golf. He just is like steady Eddie, you know, so buttery little like, you know, he might have to hit a five iron into the into a par three. We're hitting eight irons, but it's always just like he, he don't miss. Just like on the, yeah. just like on the hey, ice. Great hands. Around. Great hands. He always says, I'm like, nice hand with. 14, 1,300 points. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, just like walk off to the car. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, as Gretzky would say, uh, don't you have a TV growing up? Don't you Don't you know this is just what I did? Yeah. That's what I do. Grass can pot. Yeah. Hey, Grandpa, we got to get you out to Big Canyon, though. We've never had you out there, maybe in the new year. But you, you said you're five years from playing pro golf. Me and the Updog just played in an alumni hockey tournament. Um, it wasn't pretty out there, but, but how, how often do you play? Well, what's your daily? you have a weekly game that you play with the boys, or how much you teed it up in Boise? I try to get out um, every Wednesday. We have a, a game here with all the guys, a big money game. It just doesn't really work out, like I said, with the kids. But I play probably three times a month, maybe up to five if I have a good month. And then uh, I just got back from a, a couple trips. I was in uh, Dominican at the place called uh, Casa de Campo. Have you ever, guys ever heard of that place? Oh, no. Fucking unbelievable. It's uh, right on the ocean. There's like eight ocean holes. It's wicked. I was there... Uh, with this guy his name is uh tj rule he owns golf away tour the canadian company you know set, it's like one of those guys set up all these you know trips ireland spain whatever and then uh four days after that i got back from that then i went down to uh miami to Doral for a member guest down there with some buddies and yeah a bit of a shit show though <laughs> <laughs> Doral's so hard man me and loops we played this is years ago now we're on a bender in miami we're like let's go play Doral. 
and we're both just slashers and like it was just so hard do you find that as a hard course for for a guy with your your skill yeah, level? you know what we we played it up a couple tees and uh, i played pretty nicely the first couple of days and then the third round we played the blue monster the first two days and then we played another one called golden palm the last day but the the three days kind of caught up with us on the last day and i, I don't know if any of us well, we definitely didn't be a break par. And now you, when you're playing the up tee on a relatively easy golf course, that's not very good. So, so Brian here, not only has he retired from hockey, but he's officially taking himself out of the, any three day member guests. He's like, there's no chance. Three days is too much. I just it's too much. It's too much. So do you agree? Do you, is like the two day or the perfect member guest? Like if, if someone's like, Hey, we're here, you know, come in practice Monday, round. we got practice round Fuck Tuesday, that. it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, all different. That's just too much. It's too much for a guy with my habits. For sure. <laughs> you, uh, there's some guys who can handle it because they just go for a nice meal and they're in bed by nine o'clock, but that's not really my career. So I went up to the, no, so I, I, I shouldn't be allowed the member guest, but yeah, right? like if you're not going to go booze and get up hung over, then don't play in another fucking turn. I, I went to the Phoenix Coyotes uh, member guest that mm-hmm. they've had for 14 years, the alumni tournament there. It was three days. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Much. It's, you know, I'm like, but by the Sunday, plus, you know, and it's it's kind of slow and not to chirp it at all. Plus, the wife's mad at Jay Ups for playing. Yeah, like, how, how is everyone getting away with this? I mean, <laughs> what, like, what did you guys play? Uh, we played one down in. Um, it was in Mesa. It, it, it's it's owned by by one of the boys, good old alumni guys. It's you know him and his brother own the golf course, so it's there. And and it you know, it's not perfect. It's it's slow. <laughs> And, you know, there's a ton of good guys out there. A bunch of good Canadian guys come down from it. Tons of great alumni like Curtis Joseph, Gary Roberts. Uh, yeah, it was great. I got, I got a signed Cujo thing for closest to the pin in, in two. Nice. That little tap in, tap in, kick in bird. So Cujo, I, I love Cujo, right? Yeah. Good guy. Uh, but anyway, I'm like, guys, are you just saying this thing's three days? So you just get one extra day away from the old ladies back home? Or is, is it actually three days? <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Hey, Grandpa, you, you said you played nicely there. I've, I've noticed with you golf guys, nicely is a word you boys like to use a lot. Like, oh, I had a nice, and it was a, I played nice, or I hit it. I mean, is that just a, a kind of a cliche thing with golfers, or why does nicely always come out? I, I guess it's just a better way than saying you played really well. I don't know. Yeah. Want to? It's just you don't want to be patting yourself on the back, I guess. But yeah, I played nicely. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear yeah, guys say. I played nicely today. That was a nice round. I played nicely out there. Is that what you hear a lot? Because you do want to have the golf channel on a lot. Listen, I, I, I don't have it on as much as I, I used to because I, I just can't take Brandel Chambly anymore, you mm. know. But I used to watch it nonstop. Yeah. Like when Grandpa was on tour, I was a golf nerd, Grandpa. I watched Golf Channel every day. I knew every tournament. Now, honestly, up the, I, I don't watch as much. So, and it's this time of year that you'd start to put it on because well, Hawaii is just a yeah. reporter. I, I'm fired up about this. And, and great, great little segue. First of all, let me ask you this, Grandpa. I know you never played in it, but obviously Tiger Woods has got to be one of your, your idols growing up. I went down to the Hero in Bahamas. As an ex guy, like what a cherry tournament that Tiger puts on for these guys, right? Like there's no fans. The purse is like four or five million dollars. You hang out in Albany. Like how, how nice is it for Tiger to throw this on for the boys? Yeah, those are the good perks. That's like, I mean, it's almost like making the all star team. Like when you're getting, you know, that's, that's that's for the top guys, that's for the top players. And, and uh, yeah, it's almost like a little bit of an exhibition. They go down there. If you play great or if you play well, great. And if you don't, it doesn't really matter, obviously. But yeah, I mean, uh, I actually haven't been to Albany, but the Bahamas is pretty nice, and it's a pretty nice way to end the year. Yeah, I remember, you'll, get, you'll appreciate this. I remember the I was leaving the course on the Friday, and Sam Burns just finished. He was on 17 when I was leaving, and by the time I got to my golf cart, got home, threw my board shorts on, and went, he was already in the ocean with his kids. I was like, that's a guy that's not working on the short game after. And he's just like, fuck, <laughs> exactly. let's go. I was like, this is a good tournament for me. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, Grandpa, obviously the PGA Tour season's starting here. I just wanted to ask you as a former player, like, I wanted to go over to Maui for New Year's, but I, I, I couldn't afford it on the podcast uh, on the podcast salary nowadays. But how nice is it starting over there for the boys? Getting to the Sony, if you're lucky, lucky enough to play in Maui, but just as an ex-guy, like, how nice is it for those boys to start over there? Yeah, I always loved it. And it's like, I mean, a lot, all the West Coast guys always play at Hawaii. You know, if you're coming from the East Coast, it's a long way. There's a you guys would, you know, fly over to, you know, Scottsdale practice for a week or something before, and then take the family over to Hawaii. But all the West Coast guys always play, and I thought it was just the best way. I mean, you open up your hotel room window and you're staring at Waikiki Beach and the, you know, the Pacific Ocean, and and you know you get to the 
tournament and everybody's rusty. So like the expectations are pretty low and almost the same thing. If you play well, awesome. If not, you're in Hawaii. It's a pretty good place to miss the cut if you're going to miss one because <laughs> you go out and have some fun at Honolulu, <laughs> which uh, there, there's a few places, you know, as you go through the tour, it's like, wow, you, you never want to miss a cut. But if you're going to miss one, you know, it's like LA was a good one to miss. Yeah. Um, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. Charlotte's a sneaky good city. Yeah, I played in Charlotte near the end of my career against the Checkers. That's a good city, Gramble. Yeah. Yeah. And that golf course there is awesome too quail hollow it's 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 one of my favorites but uh but yeah hawaii's an awesome way to start the season especially if you're able to go there for two in a row i hear there's a puerto rico to, to talk about the minors and we all played in the minors here i see we ever that's pretty good but uh puerto rico did they have one in the i i heard there's a little island tournament like that's in the not the corn ferry, but what's the one? What's the ferry? It's corn ferry now. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's one. There's one down the south. Tour, the... Was it the Nike tour back in your day, Gramble? No, uh, I was uh, web.com. Oh, yeah. So it was the web.com. But I, I've heard through the grapevine that this is one, like, maybe leave the girlfriends at home. <laughs> you know, get, Just get you down. and your caddy. Come on, fellas. Yeah, Let's go. We're going to Puerto Rico this week. Get Come down on there a few days early. You know, don't grind too hard if you're not going to make that cut on Friday. And uh, and then, you know, see you next week. Yeah. And. <laughs> They have, uh, it's actually funny. I don't know if you remember Carl Peterson. He was, uh, he was an older player. He's almost 50. I don't know him. I know he, him. When he was a beauty. And one of the, he actually won the Canadian Open. Uh, one of the last couple of years that he's you know, still trying to make, he's got status, but it's not great. But they have all the, they have the tournament in the Bahamas. There's a tournament in Puerto Rico. There's a tournament in Dominican. There's one more kind of down there. And I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen you around much. Like He's like, ah, oh. he's like, oh, I just play the island tour now. It's fucking dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Bounces around from island to island event, or like all like the opposite field events, and just enjoys and goes back home and doesn't practice for another four weeks, and then does it again. <laughs> that, that sounds like my kind of schedule. There, I wish they would have had that in the NHL. I just, I'm just playing Florida, Cali, Texas, Arizona. That's it. That is great. Hey, Grandpa, real quick, you you bring up the Canadian Open, buddy, and and uh, I got to ask you. I mean, I was in Canada when it went down, and, and watching Nick Taylor as a former Canuck that tried to win that tournament, dude, just crazy, right? Amazing. Uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to be right there on the 18th green when uh, he rolled that putt. I was working for TSN that week, and I actually got choked up. Uh, we went live pretty much right after it. I got choked up on the broadcast with Duffy because, I mean, it, it just it meant so much. I mean, Nick's a good buddy of mine. We played a lot of golf together. We work out together. We had the same trainer for years. So I know all the, you know, it's not like anybody flukes their way out there, but he works his bag off. And I uh, kind of is a fly under the radar type of guy, but he's a super competitive guy as well. He's got a, obviously a hell of a golf game. He's won three times now on the PGA Tour. And uh, to see him win and just kind of take all the pressure off all the other Canadians. I mean, he did this for Mike Weir. He did this for myself. He did this for all the kids coming out that are just starting to play the game and looking up to him. And uh, that was that was monumental. I mean, not even just in uh, golf in our country, but in sport. And uh, I was just, I was so happy to be there. And, I shook his hand after kind of all the craziness sort of ha went down and Bobby Weeks and Duffy were saying, Hey, we got to go. I'm like, I have to, I have to give this guy a hug first. And same thing, got a little bit like emotional. I was just so proud of him. So happy. It's uh, he's an awesome guy. Uh, easy got to cheer before. I mean, yeah. I'll tell you what, I was, it was the proudest moment. I, yeah. I to be a Canadian. I was so fucking proud at that particular moment. I can't remember. Maybe Joe Carter, maybe Joe Carter or when the boys, <laughs> or when the, the boys Olympics. were gold in Vancouver. Totally. Like, but I was so proud to be a yeah, Canadian. When Weirzy, yeah. When or the Masters. Masters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so the, yeah, you can count it on one hand, though. The, like the feeling that you had as a Canadian sports fan of how many times you've you've been brought back to that and felt like it felt amazing to be a Canadian, right? Yeah, I felt and sometimes we don't need to get into it. Sometimes I'm not exactly proud to be a Canadian at times. <laughs> but at that time, I was super proud. I'm like, this is what Canada's all about. <clears throat> Everyone was still there. Everyone was wearing red and white. Everyone was pinned, and he made a fucking hundred ball, oh. whatever it was, and the place went nuts. I was like, "This is unreal." Crazy. How was yeah, that party crazy. after? How was the party after? You know what? Good question. Everybody. So they, there's a there was a private uh, uh, chartered flight that was going from there because it was straight to the U.S. Open in L.A. And so they actually uh, all the other players had to win on the tarmac. This thing went into a playoff, and then Nick has to do all the media and everything afterwards. So. He eventually said, hey, you guys go. And he flew down, uh, I think, later that night or first thing the next morning. But he was. I told him, I'm like, hey, buddy, let me know when if you want to go for yeah. a cocktail. And he texted later. He's like, he was just wiped. Like, oh, after doing all the media, 
all the emotion and just just he was mentally and physically he just basically you know they went out for dinner just him and his fat family and uh, his agent then jumped on the bird the next he, morning rbc should have gave him their global to fly down there the next yeah, morning right. yeah. yeah totally you know what he just did for rbc it's incredible by the way they better signed him after to like a massive deal did they not or <laughs> you i don't you think you're gonna have to worry about money the rest of his life. yeah i mean that totally. basically just punched his stick and i told him like you'll never have to Nah, no kidding. No kidding. That's what I always thought. Like, if I ever won a cup in Vancouver, like, you'd just be a, or if you win one in Calgary or Toronto, you're, you're for, for the rest of your life. Yeah, you're allowed to you miss practice yeah, now. Yeah. Whatever you want. They don't, whatever you want. They won't have radio shows looking for you anymore. <laughs> They'll be like, ah, he'll be here when he gets here. Hey, Gramble, um, he was wearing that three wood out, though, that he was hitting on 18. Was it three wood he kept hitting off that? I'm like, he's going to wear this club out. He just kept hitting it over and over again. And then finally, actually, his worst tee shot was the one he hit on the last one where he hit it up and then made the putt. Yeah, it was uh, it was a bit of a goofy hole. It was like you never see a converted par four to a par five. Usually it's the other way around, but just the way they had this little creek kind of running through and this elevated green, it was a bit of a strange hole. And I think everybody going into the week, they weren't really a big fan of it. Um, just, you know, strategically, it was kind of goofy. You're hitting like, you know, either a hybrid or three wood off the tee and then a hybrid or, you know, three wood into the green. Uh, but it ended up, be in the most dramatic hole and it will be one of the most you know remembered 72nd holes of the canadian open or the 18th hole i guess for for actually turned out to be pretty good forever it was unbelievable uh last thing here uh waste management first of all are you going if so we'll see you there tell me you're going because we're fired <laughs> up for waste management draft kings has got their sport and social are you going to be in the desert fella i actually am not i'm uh i'm going the next week to la maybe i can see you guys there i'll be a riv but um it didn't really come on my schedule, and I'm I'm actually going to be working quite a bit right after that. And the winter's here for skiing for the family, so I won't be there that week. I mean, that's a fun week to be in, in Scottsdale for sure. But I lived down there for you know ten years, and it's also a good week to not be there. If you know what I mean? Too, it's just so crazy. It's so busy. I mean, to go to a restaurant or to play golf anywhere, they just jack up prices, and to get an Uber anywhere, but. It's also an experience, that's for sure. Hey, did if you, you got the golden ticket? You don't have to wait, like get shuttled everywhere. And you can got to weigh in and out. It's it's not too bad. But like now that I'm in media, it's like holy shit, it's brutal, man. Like just trying to get in and out of that place. Yeah. Did Did you like playing there? Did you embrace that atmosphere? You love it. Yeah, yeah, loved it. Yeah, I played good. I I lost by one the year that I finished second there when uh, Kevin Stadler won. We partied though that night. Like I won the tournament. I went over <laughs> to his place. He got a little condo just kind of a mile down from tpc and we we're all there and uh but yeah that was that was it, w it was one of my favorite tournaments every year to play but as soon as the week was over you're we glad that not every week was like that uh some big news this fall um in golf uh, you know it was high headlines everywhere had a lot of uh positive and negative feedback but we might as well jump into it john rom world's best number one golfer makes the decision to go to live tour Let's be honest. For six hundred bananas, I think you and I we would we would start figure skating if we if we had to. Um, <laughs> what what are your what are your thoughts on you know on, on this situation? And then you know what what do you see this doing to the di dynamic of of now the PGA and Live and maybe the um, you know the commitment they have moving forward, or does this separate them even more? Yeah, it's a good question, man. I don't know. I feel like he's the first of probably more dominoes fall if they don't uh you know figure something out and figure it out quickly there's no question i mean if you're jordan spieth or max Homa or justin thomas or any of these guys and you see that you know you 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 basically back the pga tour this entire time and they keep saying hey we're going to do this for you we're going to do this for you and for the most part they have uh you know they've raised purses obviously immensely i mean i wish i was playing these last couple of years uh, because I mean, the purses have pretty much doubled and some of them quadrupled some of those big events. Um, and you know, like the whole thing, the fans are the ones getting screwed in this whole deal. All the players are doing well on no matter which way you go. And I don't think any player for the most part holds it against guys for going because I mean, it's easy to take the moral high ground if you're, you know, you got a desk job somewhere and you're looking at these guys and it's like, oh, he's already a millionaire. What's he need this for? But Nobody's ever had a check for five hundred million dollars or whatever it is dangled in front of their face. And, I mean, like I, I tell people all the time, like I don't know what the exact numbers. They don't make them, uh, you know, public knowledge. But 
you know, say Dustin Jonathan got 150 million ish. Well, if he was worth 150 million in net worth, and then all of a sudden, boom, you can double your net worth in one day. If you if your net worth is thirty thousand dollars, someone offer you thirty thousand dollars, and we go. So I don't think anyone blames them. I think the the hard part is that guys who've left, and not all of them, but some of the guys are pretty vocal about wanting to be able to play both. And I think that that's the thing that really pisses off some of the guys that are on, on tour that have kind of stuck stuck it out here and said, "Listen, man, you took your money. Nobody blames you. You go ahead and play, but." You can't come back here now and play on this tour. However, they've got to figure something out quick or else it seems like the PGA Tour is almost has the potential to become a feeder tour forever to live. And now it's obviously not good for the PGA Tour. No, no. And, and touching back to the fans, um, the you know, the, I don't think Liv ever wanted to be the top, top thing. They just wanted to live a side PGA Tour. It, do, do you agree? And do you think that they should just, you know, quickly find a way to make you know, all the great events in the PGA stay these great events, allow the best players in the world to play in those and have live as this different format team play worldwide, you know, because the PGA is U.S. based and U.S. born and it should stay that way. But make the other one the worldwide event that takes over, you know, 12 or 13 weeks a year. I just see like put it all aside. If it's truly for the fans that are going to get screwed on this, let's make them both work and live with each other. That That's the way I see it. Yeah, I would agree. And I've heard a lot of people propose, uh, you know, similar things. Make like the off-season time for live. You have five, six events, whatever. You go to Dubai, you go to wherever it is. You kind of go around the world. And you, you maybe you reward the top 50 players on the PGA Tour. You get to go play in this team thing every off-season for a massive amount of money. And that's your reward for playing well on the PGA Tour. And then all these guys are going to want to play. Cause the thing is, like, I can guarantee you, John Rahm and Brooks Kepka and all those guys, they still want to play Rib. 100%. They, they still want to play Muirfield and they want to play the Players' Championship. But they also just took care of their family for the next four or five generations. You can't blame them for doing that. Grandpa, I, I, I like the Live Tour, but what I hear a lot of your, your former competitors and guys that you know is the world golf rankings. Like, as an ex guy, when you, when you hear about this, like, what do you think happened? Do you think the world golf rankings? are fair the way they are right now? Or did you think they were fair when you played? Um, I think that they were as fair as they could have been uh, back when I was playing. But, I mean, I I don't think there's any credibility to them at all anymore. Like, look, man, everyone knows that Brooks Kepp is one of the best players in the world. He's whatever. He's not even in the top 50. I mean, like, that's full shit. It's, uh, so, like, now, and rankings, it's basically a PGA Tour ranking. It's really not even... A world ranking system anymore. You might sprinkle in a couple guys from the deep DP World Tour, but I don't think there's any real cred- credibility there anymore. And I understand why the PGA Tour fought against it for so long because that was the one thing that was keeping all, all these players who were being recruited over to live on the PGA Tour was because they want to play in majors and they can't qualify for majors unless they've won one recently. They can't qualify for majors without world ranking points. So that's when Monahan tried to really, you know, drag his toe in the sand and stand on the one side and say, this is not going to happen. Um, but obviously, we try to know where things have gone here. And, uh, you know, I think that Jay, I mean, you, you just kind of think about the hypocrisy from everything right from when it all started. How he's like, this is never going to happen. At first, they, they were in denial that another tour, because there was rumors about this for years before it actually finally came to fruition. And uh, at first, they kind of scoffed at it, and they didn't think. I'm just like talking about the brass and the PJ Tour. They didn't think it was actually going to happen. And then they started to get some legs, and they lost a couple guys, but they still didn't take it all that seriously because I didn't think that they think they would think that they would actually spend this kind of money and sustain it for you know. I guess it's been almost what a couple years now, uh, but I think the threat is so real now that the their only option is to figure something out, figure out. Something. Grandpa, we were talking, you know, the last couple months of Mr. Curfew. I saw some stuff online, like uh, a Ryder Cup style live versus the PGA Tour. Like, oh, is that so. not a no brainer for the PGA Tour? Like, I would want to be, if I was Smith and Thomas, I'd be like, set it up, Jay. I want to kick these fucking guys' asses and we can make so much money on this. Yeah, I would even say, and just to touch on that before you jump in, is, is the live tour would probably agree to like a stupid split of like 80 20. Like, PGA, take 80. We'll take 20 to cover our costs. Like, I think that could be super negotiable and a great way for the PGA to, you know, bump stick up. it to them. Well, and it's like, I mean, look, you watch the Ryder Cup. I'm sure you guys did 
it's not the same. Like I don't like Patrick Reed. I don't like Bryson DeChambeau. But those guys were missed in that tournament. But it's hard to stay in, yeah. right? And so, and then I think if you did, I, I don't know if this would ever happen. I just don't think that unless we had a new commissioner in there and they agreed to some sort, of, and it would, it would be strictly about money yeah, at that point to try to, you know, get revenue for the PGA Tour. That would be the only reason this would ever happen. But because there's a lot of hatred now between some of the players that have left and some of the players that have stayed. It'd be awesome. And uh, it would it would make great TV. There's no question about that. Yeah. Grambo, last golf one before we move on to your flames here. It's a while. It's a ways down. It's not till I think, September. But President's Cup, I know you played it as a player. It's going to be in Montreal. We have this thing called Fella Tour. Coming. We're going to probably go. I know it's a ways oh, away, yeah. but how yeah. sick is it going to be, bro? It's the best. Uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to play one. I'm actually captaining the uh, Junior President's Cup, which is the weekend prior of the international team up against the Americans. So that'll be a lot of fun. Those kids all get to meet uh, the actual pros here, you know, uh, on the Monday, Tuesday, you get some pictures and stuff with them. So, And then I'll be up there uh, working it for TSN as well. So if you guys are coming, that would be awesome because uh, it's a good place to have a couple beers down in old Montreal. There's no question about it, but... Yeah, oh, yeah. Else, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. I mean, that that golf course is set up great for for match play. You think back to when Weirsy beat Tiger in the singles there with Nick Taylor, you know, coming off his Canadian Open win and the Canadian fans, and we could potentially say we as Canadian have like four or five guys on that yeah. team legitimately, and that, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, we'll put that one in the fellow yeah. tour. Yeah, we'll put that one in the schedule right now. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Grambo, let, let's talk some Flames hockey. And first of all, for the fellas out there that are listening, we all know the Flames got off to a tough start. And I'm going to say Graham Dillette is the fucking reason they turned it around. Grambo wears a 55 <laughs> O'Brien jersey. You Where were you? Were you in mini watch? Where were you with your son? Yeah. Seattle. I took my son to Seattle, yeah. They won that game, and the record since Grambo speaks for itself. Not too bad, yeah. They went on a little heater there for a while, and uh, it's been fun. Um yeah, tough start though for sure. I mean, I think that everyone had a lot of higher hopes kind of going into the season. Obviously, you know, losing Gaudreau and uh Kachuk over the last couple of years has hurt, but um it's uh it's been tough as a place fan a little bit. It's like you know, like every October like, okay, this this is the year we're gonna come and then they come out so flat and a little disheartening, I'll just <laughs> to say the least. But uh just to be in a, in a bit of a playoff race is all you can really ask for, I think, right now. As a fan, Grambo, you know, I, I think it's a done deal, but the, they're going to get a new rink, right? I think, I listen, we'd not be playing in the Saddle Dome. It wasn't one of my favorite barns, but it does have character. But as a Flames fan, when you're trying to get free agents to come, that's got to be a huge, you got to be looking forward to a new barn. Yeah, I think that that's, I mean, obviously, while well, in Edmonton, you got McDavid and Dreisaitl, so that helps. But I think that that new barn all, also kind of sparked things there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's an old rickety rake. There's no question about it. So it'll be good to get, and even just like the experience for the fans, you know, like, uh, you know, going in and out of the game and having like, you know, all these new rakes now have like bars and restaurants set up all around everywhere. It's more about the fan experience than it is just the game. And um, so hopefully that'll help as well. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's been top. And I mean, with the defensemen that were kind of losing the door off, that's it, the only... I, I try as a fan because I play professional sports not to like get upset at players. And because look, man, it's like I've shot 76. You know what's better than shooting 76? Shooting 65. Yeah. I fucking try every single time. You know, everyone's on Huberto. It's like it's not he's not trying. Oh. Not that he's not trying. You know what I mean? Like it's and so like to get on him and then just to hear. I'm be, I know with media, it's different because you know, you got to answer the questions if you're a professional athlete. It's one of the things yeah. that's great when you're playing well. You're excited to go up in front of the mic, but sometimes you got to face the music when you're not playing well. But in the social media, and I hope that those guys don't listen to it because it's just nonstop, just negative negativity. And if if you want him to start playing better, the last thing you need to do is keep telling him how he's not producing. And so he's obviously so skilled, and I hope that he can kind of get back to. He probably won't be that 115 point guy that he was down in uh, in Florida, but. He's super skilled, and you can see it, and the frustration is real. Dude, I was just going to say, the Flames games I've watched this year, and credit to the Flames fans out there, they're, they're not really getting all over them because I think they can see how crushed Hubie is, how hard he is trying. And granted, his feet aren't good, Uppy, but the games I've watched, if I'm Hubie, if I had any advice for Hubie, I'd continue to work on my shot 
because he's such a pass first guy that 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 D men know it, the goalies know it. Is his shot is probably not the great. I think if he gets his shot better, yeah, shoot mentality. No, he's never it might open sure. up some ice for him. It's it's crazy, but it's just the the whole mindset of being in Canada and dealing with the media to being in Florida for your first nine years is just it, it's like apples and oranges. It's like going back to play in your hometown you know, golf course where, you know, you could shoot 60 with your eyes closed and then go in and play in the masters all the time. It's like, it's, it's hard. And he Ooh. just hasn't been able to, you know, for a kid with a strong mind, like I know him, yeah. he, it's the game is getting faster and he's just like trying to find answers. I know the feeling, just, yeah, I know I the feeling but I was trying to find answers. I wasn't making 10 nap bananas, but I will say this, and this is cool to Flames fans too. And Hubie probably admit it. He's lucky he's not playing in Montreal making 10 and a half because oh, they would boo him out of that yeah. fucking barn every night. And the Flames fans, Granville, have taken the high road. And I, I'm glad because I love Hubie. Yeah. And I honestly think that, I mean, I just think he's too skilled to not, you know, he wasn't, I was watching the game here last night. And he wasn't on, even on the number one power play unit, right? So, I mean, yeah. the little piece of humble pie, and sometimes you need that, but. I mean, that Connor Zary's kind of stepped in as that number one role there. He's been really good. That Pospisil has had a nice little rookie year. And that Sharon Govich came over from New Jersey. He's been unreal. So there are some positives. And if Mark Sturdy can keep kicking, you yeah. do, you never know. But you just got to give yourself a chance to come play off that. What about Kadri? I love Kadri. Obviously, last year came in. Big contract. Won the Stanley Cup. He's playing well this year. But you got you to gotta love Kadri's game. Oh, he's a good Western kid, lad. I, I mean, I always enjoy watching him play. I think it's another one of those things. There's a lot of fans kind of on him for maybe point production, but he does a lot of stuff kind of, you know, away from the puck that and kind of mucks it up. And you, you don't want him to be that guy that he was in Toronto when he was taking dumb stupid dumb. penalties in the playoffs and everything like that. But, I mean, he I think he plays his best and he does his best role when he is mucking it up and kind of, you know, he's got a little bit of jam in his game. Grandpa, I couldn't have you all without asking about my boy Weegsy Baby, Mackenzie Weeger. Oh, oh he's been good. Yeah, you gotta love Weegsy Baby. He's out there just mucking it, playing great. One hundred percent. He, yeah, he is. He's so smart. Like I didn't really know much about him when he was playing in Florida. Obviously, you know, like people talk about McKay. He's been really, really good. It took him maybe half the year last year to kind of maybe sort of find his role or his his way there. But he's been really good. He's great on the power play and. He just kind of sneaks into that top of the circle every once in a while and decides to just kind of fire one, and he scored a lot of goals. I, I just want to ask you one thing before we let you go. I, you got a great office there. What's what's <laughs> one of those, He likes a nice office. Yeah, what's one of those prized possessions you got behind you there? Is it is that a Whitney bobblehead that I see there? What, what's no, that? that's, that's Gordy. Oh, Gordy. 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 That's a good one. Jeez, don't don't yeah. let the whiz know I compared him to Gordy's uh, fifty five year old frame on What's that. What's that one? What's that one there? Is that the Masters or something? This is what I was going to show you. This is yeah, this is one of my that. favorites. I don't know if you read that. That's my Masters invitation. Oh, amazing, nice. brother! Every Masters golfer's invitation. dream. Yeah. Every golfer's dream, right there. Yeah, that was pretty cool when I saw that in the mail. In I guess what was that December two thousand four thirteen? That was pretty cool. My wife framed it up pretty much. Uh, the next day or for Christmas or whatever for me, but uh, yeah, the the bobblehead. I don't know if you do you remember Z from uh, uh, Whisper Rock. He was like the, yes. yeah, the host. At the, He's the got my bobblehead in there. Yeah, he had a million bobbleheads. I actually gave him one of my. Yeah, yeah. When he retired, probably five years ago or whatever, and so he gave about he gave a bunch of them to all the members. He didn't want to. He had a massive collection. I know he did. So he's like, hey, you got to pick one. Who do you want? I'm like, oh, he's a Saskatoon boy. I got to take Gordy now. So, well, yeah. that's, uh, he was a good man. That's it. He's a good man. Hey, well, one last thing before we let you go here, Grambo. Uh, you're doing. You're trying to take your son to every every NHL rink or something. You're yeah. doing. How many have you been to? How many you got left? Or how many years is it going to take? Just two so far. I got 30 to go. Okay. But, uh, he, he's, he's eight years old. We're actually going to Colorado um, in January. We're going to go ski with Johnny Lyles. Awesome. And uh, his his brother in law is one of my best buddies from Calgary. So we're doing some skiing. We're going to catch an Avs game while we're there. But uh, yeah, I've been just going to slowly take it away. It might take till he's twenty five years old, but it's just kind of something special. I'm I got him for Christmas, like a or I'm going to get him like a little map, you know, with all the ranks and just kind of like check them all off. And yeah. as a father son thing, it's be pretty cool to do. Yeah, I just had my dad in town, Grambo, and I yeah, I reminisced on some of the father trips, and then I was like, so how many? How many places did you actually get to? And I think he said 25 out of the 30, right? A lot of older buildings too, Pittsburgh and, you know, uh, 
Yeah. I'm just trying to think, but, but I'm like, fucking right. It's like he, cause I always say like, do you miss coming to watch the boys on the road? You know? And he's like, I do, but he's like, I did make it to 25 different barns. I'm like, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Well, you should take him to the last seven. Bro. Yeah. Ah, totally. There you, there you go. No, no, that's right. It's exactly that's a good right. idea. Yeah. Vegas hasn't been to Vegas yet, has he? <laughs> no, I Vegas, all right. First one's Vegas, baby. Let's go, Big Scott. <laughs> hey, Gramble, we could do this all day. We could do this all day with you, fella. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time, man. Uh, you've always been good to us at Mister Curfew. If you're out in LA, let's tee it up. And then in Colorado, let me know. We'll get we'll get you down to the dressing room. I'm sure Johnny Lyles can help you out. But if you need help with that, we'll get you down to the dressing room and meet the boys. Oh, my son's a big McCarr fan. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Gramble. We appreciate it, buddy.